oniony goodness hope in space and we are back you're listening to our different take episode uh, 34 Hello there, and welcome, yeah. everyone, to our different take. My name is Brian, proud father of two awesome boys, Jedi podcaster. This is the way. And to my left is Scott. Welcome back, Scotter. Uh, hey, hey. My name is Scott. I'm from the Republic of Texas and the somewhat, okay, yeah, pretty proud father of three beautiful women. And uh, I am interested in conspiracy theories, the paranormal space, the final frontier, spiritual al- alternative health, and just about anything else that the government tells us to ignore. I find all that stuff interesting. Excellent. Well, we've been gone for quite some time. We've been in a sabbatical researching topics for our podcast. Yeah, it's definitely what we've been doing. July. Researching. So, yes. <laughs> I went to the Himalayas. Yes. Uh, did you meet your guru out there? No, but the the only way I found food was uh, like there was a, I ate a lot of porcupines because I found him laying on the road. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you really, you were really reenacting Eat, Pray, Love, weren't you? <laughs> You're pulling a little yeah. Julia Roberts out and going out to try to <laughs> try to find yourself in the in the Himalayas. Mm-hmm. I yeah. did find myself. Yeah. I was there. Did you find the whole time? Did you find Himalayan? On the road. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Himalayan on the road. Yeah. All yes, right. I did. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see our, uh, we haven't really changed <laughs> much since, <laughs> since our sabbatical. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Right. Some uh, might be happy. Some might be sad, huh. but that's okay. <laughs> We're, this podcast is going to be a little bit shorter episode kind of so we can get back into the swing of things let everyone know we're going to start rolling again we're going to release two episodes i mean an episode every other week like we started to when we first started the podcast and uh so we're just kicking things off again and we'll do a little recap of what we've been up to the past nine months or whatever since we've put out a podcast so what what have you been up to there scott oh man uh been really really busy researching topics right that, okay no i haven't that's a bunch of shit so yeah been hiking and doing all kinds of cool stuff been out to your fine state a couple of times and uh matter of fact um was out there right before the whole thing caught on fire oh. uh you guys had those uh, 115 mile an hour winds straight line winds yeah it was and, crazy uh, half of uh half of boulder caught on fire and uh was really really close to where i was um it was uh kind of well kind of scary i guess but yeah your family though i mean their their house was okay and everything right yeah. wherever they were at yeah but it has heartbreaking reading some of those stories you know the you know how facebook has those things on there now where it's like um uh, marked safe from whatever mm-hmm. and so they'll set up like these little pages of where people can go and during the fires you pull it up and it's like people who had gone out of town for the holidays and they heard about the fires and they're like oh my god and they they posted a picture of their dog and their cat and they're like somebody go in there and break the window and get them out please please Mm. and you know people are like oh geez that's so sad and you know like i'll I'll do it i'll do it and then you know you find out that uh, the house had already burned down and their pets were lost to the fires and it's like oh yeah man. it's horrible that's yeah, so sad right so sad to, i can't even imagine that i mean i, I it wasn't wasn't human life but still you know you get you get attached to your pets and sad sad stuff but um yeah your family yeah yeah but anyway yeah i've been hiking and going around different uh different parts of the world and um and seeing what there is to see but uh Trying to avoid, uh, you know, succumbing to uh, all of the 
the the the, the Rona that's going around. Finally, it finally got me. Yeah, and uh, and I'm all better now. So I got better. I got better. Did you have bad symptoms? No, no. I, I took all the stuff that they tell you that you're not supposed to take. You know, mm-hmm. right? And everything was gone in 48 hours. So nice. So you didn't die. I, um, I don't think I did. That's good. Yeah, good. yeah. And I've been watching some new sh- TV shows on uh, Netflix. Uh, watched uh, on your recommendation, Lost in Space, which I really didn't think I was going to like, but uh, grabbed me and uh, I got into it. And it was, that was a that was a good good show. Uh, we watched uh, Squid Games. Everybody's seen that one, but I guess I guess you haven't seen it all, right? You. No, I stopped at episode four, I think. And you did that why? Oh, the lip syncing or whatever was horrible. I don't know. If if you if you put that on Mystery Science Theater, I would be happy to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be all into that. Uh, yeah. That was, you know, that Mystery Science Theater reboot, I don't know if you watched that or not. Oof, I tried. I wanted to like it so bad. I did too. It was so bad. It, it was, was. It was horrible. Yeah, the original one was was pretty good, but man, the reboot sucked. Ooh, so no, I couldn't so even. Hard. I made it through like a one and a half of those. I'm like, this is crap. Yeah. I can't watch it. Yeah, some things disappointing. Some things need to be left in the past as good memories. They do. It's kind of like when you pull up. You know, when, when you have some. Uh, like every every teenage boy had like half naked pictures of these beautiful women holding guns or whatever, you know. <laughs> you pull them up 25 years later and just see what they look like now or you know like Daisy Duke. Yeah. It's oh, like, it's like whoa, 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 what what did, I should have just left the memory alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't go back and I mean you can go back and look but don't look them up now. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard. Sometimes you you just you just kind of curious how somebody's aged, and some of them hold up pretty well, and uh, and then others is just like, oh no, no, I just need to leave you in the past. Like Job of the Hut, turning the Job of the Hut. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, Mel Brooks, uh, Pizza the Hut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> horrible she's gone from suck to blow <laughs> uh, if you haven't watched space balls you need to pull that one out and dust it off and get back at it that is pretty good i gotta say but i saw another one last night it was kind of an interesting show osmosis it's a french show you know how netflix has a lot of those foreign shows that they dub what squid games right <clears throat> so um osmosis was a promising one it sounded it looks kind of interesting where you have some implant that you take and uh, and you can find your soulmate. It, it like hooks up with people's brain waves and you can find your soulmate just by strolling down the road. You can kind of know who they are. And and uh, it's like a like a Tinder app for like a Black Mirror episode for for Tinder, I guess. Uh, it's kind, yeah. of, kind of interesting. Looks looks uh, looks kind of promising. Uh, we'll see how that one turns out. I'm only one episode into it so far. Sounds good. Yeah. What have you been up to? Well, let's see. A few more things. I I started a, at a different job. So I left the previous job I was at probably around probably around the time we record our, recorded our last podcast. Uh, yeah, that is about the time. Huh? You had to mm-hmm. go full f- four f- Blah, 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 blah. You had to go full force into your new job. I did. They, I, I got on with them. It's a car auction, and then, what? Well, after a couple, well, about three weeks in or so, I got shipped out to uh, New Jersey for an entire month. Oh, Jersey. All right. New Jersey. Yeah, we were uh, messing with a bunch of cars out there from a flood. For, well, from uh, Hurricane, was it Ida? I think going through there. I, I don't know. With, Ida. I think so. Or like, Ida, no. like, or Ida, like, like potatoes. Yeah, it was a potato cane <laughs> <laughs> out there. 
Speaking of which, I know this is totally off subject. I'm trying to, I'm interrupting you, but you just reminded me of that. Uh, did you see that thing where there was a, it was raining fish in Texarkana? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I think you sent me that. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of raining potatoes or legit was raining fish down from the sky. Was that, was that because there, maybe there's a tornado that went through a lake or something and picked up a bunch of fish? I mean, that's what they say, but you know, I'm convinced uh, that there was probably some, you know, big ocean in the sky that just started leaking and dropping fish on people. Would you chalk that up to global warming? The fish from the sky? Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah, that's what I, I think that's what Biden said. It, yeah. It's, everything is either global warming or racism related. So. Um, th- yeah, I'm not sure which one this would fall into. Well, I mean, the fish could have been racist. It, it could have been depending on what kind of fish they were and where they fell, I guess. I don't know. Yep, exactly. Something like that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, that was totally off the subject. You were talking about potatoes coming down from a hurricane landed on cars and <laughs> potatoes, potatoes to fish. <laughs> and then back po- to potatoes. Oh, <laughs> uh, so you were in Jersey. <laughs> so I was in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, so I was there for a month, and then uh, got shipped off to Dallas for a few weeks, and then back up to Colorado. So, oh yeah, yeah. Where... So when you were in Dallas, we got to uh, we got to go out and play uh, virtual reality. We did, which was fun. Yeah, yeah it was good times. Yeah, uh, Fallout. No, wait, was that Fallout? What was the name of that game? Uh, far Away? Far something. Far, far. far? Well, we were we were shooting uh, tribal people that were trying to kill us with bows and arrows. Yeah, they called and it. And machine guns. Yeah, they called it a pirate game, but it didn't, it wasn't really piratey. I don't know. But that was super no. fun. I would love, I, I had a kick playing that. It was fun. We sweat a lot in those things, though. We were <laughs> like a whole computer on your back. And the virtual reality glasses and stuff like that. Yeah, that stuff is so trippy that it, it feels like, I mean, it messes with your mind so much. Mm-hmm. It was a good time, though. Yeah, yeah. It was I a good time. Love to do that. You said that, that uh, you did an escape room like that up in, uh, up in Colorado? Yeah, yeah. There was an escape room where, <clears throat> you know, you don't have guns or anything, but you've got your controllers in your hand and you've got the, the glasses on. And you have to, our job was there was a meteor heading towards earth. We were in a, in a spaceship and we had to get the spaceship working again in order to shoot the asteroid to save earth. Hmm. Yeah. So there's like computer things you got to, it honestly, I think I liked it better than the actual escape room. Cause really, yeah. Well, I felt less dumb because we completed it <laughs> <laughs> and the escape oh, nice. The escape rooms that I've been in, I, I haven't been able to to, com- to complete. <laughs> so I felt better about myself. So we did one of those that. when we were in Colorado. We did an escape room uh, over Christmas. It's the yeah. first one I'd ever done. And uh, there was like eight of us, though. So we Whoa. did. We finished it just because there was just so many of us. That's a big escape room. It really wasn't. <laughs> there was just oh, a no. lot of us in it. <laughs> You like packed in there? Yeah, it was like some submarine up there in uh, Broomfield, and uh, huh. yeah, it was it was a trip though. For like I said, first one I've ever done. It was it was uh, it was a real fun, uh, real fun experience. I would definitely do that again. Yeah, they're fun if you make it through it. I've been I've been to a normal one too, and then the the VR one. So I kind of like the VR one. Hmm. I really haven't got into any, well, there's some shows, you know, like The Witcher recently came out, mm-hmm. which is pretty good. Um, the Wheel of Time is good, unless you've read the book, because then it's, it's not like the book. Mm. So the people that have read the book say it's not good. I haven't made it through all the books yet, so I'm still reading those. Mm. Wheel yeah. of Time, though. The Wheel of Time. Is that on Amazon or is that uh, Netflix? That's that's Amazon. Okay. Yep, that's Amazon. I'd have to give that one a watch. Yeah, give that a watch. And then also, let's see, last year we got through Mandalorian Season 2, which was completely epic. Like the best show I've seen ever. Now, okay, I got to ask you this. If you were not Brian, like if you weren't a Star Wars 
fan like you are, would you still right. say that? Mm, if I was not Brian, if I knew of Star Wars, like the older stuff, you know? Yeah. Like when you and I grew up. Yeah. It would be entertaining to me then. It would still be good, but it wouldn't be epic. It'd be like, hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, so your wife, she like it? No. She does not. She she even not watched it. She has, I mean, she hasn't even watched an episode of it. She might have watched one where I showed her Baby Yoda, and she liked Baby Yoda. Oh, she thought, she thought he was cute, <laughs> yeah. but she didn't get into the story. Now, does she just not like uh, sci-fi stuff in general? Oh, uh, she, I think she does somewhat, but I've, uh, you know, I've drugged her, drugged her? I've dragged her along <laughs> to, like, Comic-Cons and, you know, opening nights of Star Wars, and she'll support that and everything she knows, but it's... Um, she, it's not that she doesn't like it. She's just not like into it, oh. into it. So this, you know? so the Mandalorian wouldn't necessarily be like, like just anybody would like it. You kind of got to have uh, like a Star Wars ilk. You got to kind of be into that. You kind of, you kind of do. Oh. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of the stuff you could watch it and still know what's going on. Uh huh. Um, it it just wouldn't be like every episode in season two. You, for like a, a Star Wars fan, you you're just sitting there and your mouth is wide open. And you're like, I can't believe this is happening. It's like the best thing ever. But if you're not crazy into Star Wars, it would be cool and entertaining as a good show, mm-hmm. but not like completely epic that blows your mind. So. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. I mean, the Book of Boba Fett is out now, and there's two episodes in, and it's pretty good, too. It comes out every Wednesday. They, Not as good as The Mandalorian, but it's getting better. It's getting pretty cool. They wrote a so, book about a bowl of fat? Yeah, the Book of Bowl of Fat. Wow, man, that's <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. It's kind of a mushy topic, but we, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. yeah star wars fans yeah you live for that i gotta get i have to get up early every wednesday and watch it before i go to work <laughs> <sighs> yeah. that's <Yeah>. awesome <laughs> i know we uh also cut the cord on cable tv we don't have cable tv anymore oh yeah yeah and yeah. that really bummed me out because i i, I, know, I would you. steal his uh <laughs> I'd steal his password so I could watch ESPN and watch some college <laughs> college hoops or whatever. But now I now yeah. I don't have anybody to do that from, and it's kind of sad. Yeah, sorry so about I'm that. Really needing you to get back on cable <laughs> so that so that I can have I can mooch off you again, man. I'll I actually I actually had to subscribe to ESPN because of you, man. Oh my gosh! Ah, freaking seven dollars a month. What am I gonna oh, do? No. <laughs> Here. Let me pay my 250 bucks a month again. So you <laughs> can get your freaking ESPN. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn it. This shouldn't cost anything, man. There's commercials in this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, I know. I don't miss it though. Honestly, I don't miss it. Yeah. I don't watch news in forever. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, that's the only thing, literally, that I I wish that I had cable for was for ESPN. Because well, you got to know, or or Fox Sports or whatever. Yeah, right. Because you just yeah, you can get everything else off of Roku now. I mean, you don't even need don't even need cable. It seems kind of dumb. You don't. I did get my Apple TV. I'm happy with that. I don't. I don't even know what that is. What's Apple TV? <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a box now that, uh, you know, you hook up your, to your TV. It's like a, it's like Roku is what oh, it is. Okay. But, uh, it, you can put, um, games from Apple arcade on there and play them through your TV or, you know, it hooks up right to my, my phone. So there's a website where you can get movies and I can only put all up on my phone. So I use it on my phone and then I, screen it to my tv and watch them through there and Hmm. 
it just works with Apple products really good. I've got two of my HomePod speakers hooked up to it. So it's got really good sound and stuff like that. And it's like my main, it's how I get through all the TV shows and stuff I watch is through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not an Apple guy, but I got, I'm an Android person, but I got to give it to Apple, man. Everything that Apple makes integrates. True. So like they would be the perfect company to come out with one of those self-driving cars. Yeah, that's true. Because they, it's like a flawless integration between all of the stuff that, that they come out with every, you do that with an Android and there's all these different, because it's open source, you know, it's hard to, to make things work between one device and another. I mean, Apple, Apple knows how to do that stuff. They, they got that down. Yeah, they got you. Like if I wanted to convert to Android now, I'd, I would have to just probably rip down my house and start over <laughs> with everything. Yeah, I mean, they, they get you hooked on so many different things. I, I can see where that would be really, really hard to do that. I, I've not, I know people who who work for uh, uh, Microsoft who have iPhones. Oh. I mean, <laughs> that right? if that's not kind of telling, I don't, I don't know what it is, so. Yeah, I've got when my garage door closes and I walk through the door, I've got Lano Richie on my speakers singing hello. (laughs) 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 Kind of goofy, but that's okay. (laughs) Uh, uh, Well, you know, we we all need to feel welcomed. We do. And it warms my heart every time I come home that Lano Richie is happy to see me. Yeah, yeah, I I heard that he was originally going to not work for Apple. He was going to work for... uh, uh, the Commodores. I don't, man, you know, there's gonna actually two people in the world that that's actually going to make any sense to, right? Commodore yeah, pretty good, though. was one of the original computers for all of you young folks who don't have a clue what that is. And Lionel Richie actually sang for a group called the Commodores. So, you know, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I'm, you get extra points for that one. Cause that one was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we have a topic oh, okay. for this podcast uh, <laughs> for the last few minutes of it. <laughs> yeah, for, for five five minutes now, we can talk about the topic. Yeah. But this is going to roll into our next podcast, though, too. So if you want to divulge here, maybe what we want to at least open up. So we were talking about uh, we were talking about the different things we've been watching, and you know, you're into Star Wars, and I was watching Lost in Space, and so we, you know, we all we've always both liked. to uh, space shows and you know i was a big trekkie when i was a kid and of course you and star wars and battles Battlestar galactica and all that stuff we've all loved the the space stuff uh but in reality god i I sure would love to be able to to go to jupiter and see it to go to venus you know if i wasn't going to melt down as soon as i hit the planet i would love to walk around on those things and see it that's like a it's like a dream of mine to be able to, to do stuff like that and uh, super interested in, in space. So uh, when NASA came out with this new James Webb telescope, uh, I was thrilled because I've, I have absolutely loved seeing some of the, the flybys that, uh, that these probes that they've sent out to, uh, to Jupiter and Saturn have come back with some of these just gorgeous pictures of those planets. I don't know, have you seen those? I have. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so cool. So, so very cool. And uh, the the new telescope is um, is supposed to be like 100 times stronger than the Hubble. And It's crazy to even think about that. Right? I mean, they, they said that they're going to be able to see stars that are 100 times fainter than the the ones that the um, the Hubble can pick up. So... Uh, this is going to be an amazing, amazing telescope. And uh, I think NASA was so convinced that they're going to discover extraterrestrial life as a part of this new telescope uh, that they went out and hired a bunch of theologians. Uh, some, you know... <laughs> It's like like a, it sounds like a joke, but a a, a a rabbi, a priest, and an imam walk into a NASA. 
Uh, so they, <laughs> they hired 24 theologians and they, they basically said, Hey, what do you think is going to happen if, and when we discover the existence of, um, extraterrestrial life? What, you know, because those three religions cover half of the world, I guess the half the world belongs to one of those three religions. Yeah. What, what would that do to mankind or humankind, whatever you call it now? Um, what would that do to their belief in religion? And so they hired these theologians. And, and so, uh, uh, yeah, I just found that kind of curious that, that they were doing that. And I, I kind of wonder, you know, why now? Is it is it just because of the, the, the Webb telescope? Or they have been over the last few years kind of slowly acknowledging the existence of UFOs where for years and years and years they covered that stuff up. And now all of a sudden they're saying, yeah, you know, we, we have been seeing some strange UFO things out there. Um is there something that, you know, they've been covering up for all these years and now they're just kind of, they're ready to slowly spring it on us or, you know, what, what's, what's the, what's the reason for that? What do you think? Why, why would they do that? I don't know. Part of it makes me think that do they know something probably that we don't, or do they think they know something that we don't? Uh, you always hear the, I guess you can call them conspiracy theories or whatever type of theory about the Vatican and, uh, what goes on behind closed doors, you know, is that part of it? You know, I watched a YouTube video on the um, observation tower or whatever you want to call it in, I believe in Phoenix that the Vatican has. And I guess they have a total of eight, eight astronomers who are priests, but their focus is to be, you know, an astronomer. And the, the main astronomer guy, I don't know what you call him, but anyway, the main, that the director of that, you know, stated that pretty much he's him and his uh, other people that work with him are pretty much just astronomers. They just happen to be priests at the same time. I don't know of any other religion that has uh, an astronomy division to look at that stuff either. Right. Which, which at first when you're just, like, oh, they got an astronomy thing. All right, that's cool. Well, if you think about it, you're like, hmm. I mean, what's the reason for that? It's, right, right. It's not, I don't want to say abnormal, but it, on the other hand, it kind of is. It seems you know, out of character, if nothing else. It seems out of character because like the Southern Baptists, they've got like three guys with binoculars. <laughs> that's what they have. <laughs> they don't have <laughs> telescopes. <laughs> three guys with binoculars. <laughs> I can say that. I used to be one. I can say that. So no one write any emails or nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems... It seems odd because nowadays no one has critical thinking skills, right? They just take whatever the news says and they take it for, uh, that's what's actually happening in real life. Right. Right. And not taking a minute and separating yourself from the story and saying, all right, so does this seem normal? Is it not normal? What's going on with this? And it just doesn't seem normal. Yeah. That's kind of my take on it. There's, there's a lot more to it, which I'm sure we're going to get in the next, next podcast, but it's just odd. Right. There's something odd there. Yeah. There, there's all kinds of weird things and, and not to, not to bash, uh, Catholicism because I, I really think that there's, there's a lot of good in Catholicism, but, uh, kind of, kind of, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Contrast Catholicism with the Vatican. If you can do that. Right. So there's mm -hmm. some weird stuff in, in, it's kind of like, um, uh, like, like Judaism and the state of Israel, right? The, right. Judaism is tied to Israelis, but the state of Israel is its own thing, right? And it does its own, it does its own stuff for its own political reasons, right? So the Vatican, same thing, you know, they, it's, it's definitely part of the church. But, uh, man, it's got some weird stuff if you kind of dig into some of the things that, that actually go on in, in the Vatican. And we'll, we'll try to dig into some of that stuff 
uh, on our next episode. Um, but uh, yeah, it's some weird thing. It's kind of like, okay, this is going to sound dumb. It's like DIA airport Mm -hmm. has some weird things that are going on up there. And DIA, if you fly in there now, they've actually got, they've kind of embraced the conspiracy theories up there. They'll, uh, they'll say they'll have like these pictures on the wall. that's like, um, like, are we, uh, are we renovating or is this, a uh, conspiracy theory that's going to kill you or something like that. You know, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to make fun of the conspiracy theories, but there's some really funky stuff that's gone on up at DIA. And if you actually look at some of it, it's like, what, this doesn't make any sense. And I think there's some of those things that, uh, that kind of hit me with, you know, like the Vatican as well. It's, it's like, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't seem to go along with, you know, uh, Joe Schmo Catholic guy who's just going to mass and doing his thing. Right. Um, it, it, the stuff that the, the political realm of the Vatican, uh, seems, seems very, um, uh, just seems weird. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. it. Just seems, it seems strange to me. And some of the things that they get involved in, like you said, the astronomy, I mean, that's a, that's a weird thing for an organized religion. Um, hell, the, the Hindus don't have anything like that that I know of. The, uh, the Buddhists don't have anything like that. Muslims don't have anything like that, do they? I don't think so. I don't think any of them do. I think it's just, I think it's just the Vatican. Right. You know, somebody, if, if I'm wrong on this, somebody correct me and tell me where I'm wrong about it. Because I, I legit want to know if I'm wrong on this. Somebody, uh, somebody get a hold of us and, and say, hey, Scott, uh, the you know, the... The Muslims do have a observatory and, you know, it's in wherever Dubai or wherever it is. So mm-hmm. I'd be interested in knowing that if, if it's out there. What well, do you think maybe what they're doing is that if there is alien contact and if Catholicism isn't up on this, that a lot of people would leave the religion just because now there's aliens. And I mean, who knows what would happen? but maybe they're trying to get ahead of the game and associate themselves with that. So they don't lose followers. Yeah. That's an interesting idea there that they're kind of priming the pump, so to speak, so Mm -hmm. that they can say, see, we told you. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that would be interesting. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, Interesting stuff, but uh, the timing to me, seems seems uh, more than a coincidence in that just you know i mean it wasn't that long ago that if you talked about a ufo to to the general public that um you know 90 percent of them would look at you like you were crazy but oh, yeah recently they've they've done um polls of people to say you know do you believe that extraterrestrials exist and in America, which was one of the lowest responding countries, uh, as far as people who has responded affirmatively, forty-five uh, percent of them said yes, and and that was one of the lowest ones out there. Uh, it wasn't the lowest. I think the lowest was South Africa, something like thirty-seven percent. But even that, thirty-seven percent, that's you know a little over one in three people that said yeah, definitely they're they're out there. Right. Um, so. Uh, the, the definitely in my lifetime, it's shifted. The, the views of, uh, of extraterrestrials have shifted to where a lot of people now say, yeah, of course. And I think it's got to be the Hubble telescope. It's got to have a lot to do with that because how many galaxies have they identified with that telescope? You know, have you ever seen those, those pictures where they take this, this tiny little, basically like a pixel right. of, of outer space? And then they zoom in on it with the Hubble and, and, and they find like, you know, a hundred different galaxies <laughs> in that one little pixel. And it's like, right. holy crap, man. <laughs> it's like, how can, how can all of that stuff exist? Cause each galaxy has got, you know, tens of thousands or tens of millions of stars in it. And each one of those has its own little solar system. How can all of that stuff exist? And we are the only planet in the whole universe that's got life on it. This is doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. I think I think that and I think 
uh, social media too, actually. But one thing good maybe that it did other than burp and fart videos <laughs> would be that a lot of people can film this and more people see actually what's happening, even though, I mean, some of, some of it could be fake, but it become, it's becoming more mainstream because more people are observing it and filming it and putting it out there too. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, though, is the farther that you get with that, yes, it, it opens all that stuff up, but man, the, the quality of the fakery has gotten so incredible. Right. True. Right. It's so hard to tell if anything that you see on video is real anymore. I mean, you got to dig right into it and sit there and practically do a forensic analysis on some of it to see, well, the shadowing isn't quite right here, you know? It's not, right. It's not like a golf, a golf. He's standing at the hole and he's about to putt with, he's using his putter here. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> That's good work. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, so the the analysis of this stuff it's so hard so i don't know even if somebody came out with a with a completely legitimate video of a ufo landing and a little green man with a space hat getting out walking around and somebody got it on their iphone i don't know that people would necessarily believe it it's true i don't know if this has to do with aliens or not but sometimes and pictures can be tricked too and you see these pictures all the time where, you know, like a guy's standing in 1920 in a crowd and there's a guy with sunglasses holding a cell phone in there. <laughs> You've probably seen those where, hey, is this, is this a proof of time traveling and all that, which is probably fake. But even in my mind, I'm like, hmm, that would be really cool, actually, if that was true. And yeah. You know, it's true. I mean, <laughs> it's interesting to think about the possibilities of it being true, but you know, in right. reality, we, we probably assume that it's just, um, Photoshopped or something, but right. There, there's so much of that stuff. It's like people get off on deceiving people, mm -hmm. right? It's like all of these, these, uh, TikTok videos and things where, you know, they're, they're doing these, these quote science experiments, but really they're just bullshitting people trying to see who will believe what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You seen that one where they, they move the bottle caps around and there's nine of them. And the next thing you know, they've rearranged them and there's only eight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, if you, if you, if you do it really slow, you can see where they, they kind of cut it out and slid one over the top of the other one. But you know, you can't really see it at full force. And, and so it looks like, Oh my God, how did that happen? What is this? <laughs> They're so clever. What is it? Right. And, you know, and there's another one I was watching where they, some guy took two nine volt batteries and put them in some water and some salt and then made a little tornado, but it wasn't at all. It was just, you know, they, they had taken a stir stick and, and stirred the little tornado thing up and they just didn't show that part. And then they did the whole video in reverse. And, you <laughs> nice. know, so it made it look like that these nine volt batteries were causing, you know, this, this current to happen, but it, it wasn't. So people just get off on, on tricking people. I think that it's, it's almost like a game to say, Hey, I went viral and I made that shit up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. so, like, <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, it's, it, it, the social media thing, I think it's a mixed bag. It's, it's certainly cool that they're, uh, there's so many people that are filming these things, but it's, it's hard to know what to believe anymore. Yeah. You just take it for the entertainment value and move on. Right. Yep. Like, like Rush Limbaugh used to say about the New York times, every time he would read it, he was like, Hmm, I wonder what would, what would be the case if that were true? <laughs> right. <laughs> Smart man. Smart yeah. man. Rest in peace, Rush. Yep. So we will come back. We will revisit some of this stuff uh, in the next episode. Hopefully we'll have some, some interesting uh, conspiracies and, and things uh, to just to think about with, um, uh, with maybe what the church is uh, leading us up to or maybe what they've covered up or uh, just some of the different things that um, might, might be going on with, uh, with the introduction of priests to NASA. 
and what, what that might mean for the rest of us. But we do thank you for hanging with us, uh, even as we've taken this almost seven or eight month long sabbatical. Appreciate you listening this week. We are now heard in over 58 bus stops. What the heck? We can't even say how thankful we are to wow. Greyhound. <laughs> you want to sponsor us? That would be fine. <laughs> and we do love both of our listeners. Greyhound. <laughs> Please call our voicemail line if we still have it. We, at, uh, <laughs> we do. We Someone do have it. Quick, though, we're going to lose it. I might call it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Please call it at 970-343-4594. That's 970-343-4594 to submit questions or comments or just to tell me how wrong I was about uh, which religions have observatories and which ones don't. You can go to ourdifferenttake.com and our Facebook group is still there. It's called ODT Nation. <coughs> Follow us on Instagram at our different take and leave us a bunch of spam like everybody else there does. Please send us your comments, suggestions, complaints, make it pictures or questions to show at ourdifferenttake.com. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and look for us wherever you get your podcasts from. Spotify is a good one. Yes, it is. We also have a YouTube channel called Our Different Take. Please subscribe, click on the bell. You'll be alerted when a new podcast is released. If you would have done that, then you would have known that this one that you're listening to now just came out. Just remember, question everything. Peace. Yeah, so the only thing I've done different is um, I doubled up the sock that's on top of it. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Epileptic twitching. This is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. I feel like an old, old bogey. In my day, we had real videos. No, we didn't. Yeah, it was. Nice. <laughs> that was your phone ringtone. So, the did you see the articles that I was talking about with the priests and stuff? Oh, that sounded belabored there. Man. Hey, when you're up past the knuckles, that's probably far enough. <laughs> yeah, it was something about French uh, fries or French dip or. Uh... Ooh, so stressful. God dang. <laughs> Oh no, Bill, I'm going to get killed here by a gun. <laughs> I didn't type, Brian, what have you been up to? What if I don't care? I'm just going to ask myself. <laughs> <laughs>